Welcome. Bonjour. Vous écoutez le podcast Dirty Feet sur les ondes de No More Radio. You're listening to the Dirty Feet podcast on the No More Radio Network. Nous sommes vos animateurs et animatrices. We are your hosts, Alison Burns, J.D. Papillon et Stéphanie Morin-Robert. Listen in. Écoutez. We're going to move you. This episode features an interview by J.D. Papillon of Hiriaki Umeda that was recorded back in May 2015, just before the North American premiere of Split Flow and Holistic Strata, two works that he was presenting at Théâtre Maisonneuve as a part of Mutech here in Montreal. Enjoy. Hello everyone, this is JD. So we're with Hiroaki Umeda, um, who is performing as part of the Mutech Festival. So hi Hiro Hiroaki, how are you doing today? Uh, fine, thank you. So uh, this is, you're, you're coming to Montreal to present two, uh, two works, two short works, um, which are part of the Mutech Festival. Is this your first time presenting those works in Montreal? Uh, actually, I have performed the uh, We have, I have two pieces, but one I already have uh, performed in Montreal, but the other one is the first time here in Montreal. And when you performed those pieces in Montreal, which part of, uh, in which context was this? Was this as part of Mutech, or was this in a more dance, uh, typically dance environment? Uh, it, uh, uh, I think it uh, huh, like it was uh, uh, in UCC. In the Tandimage festival, part of the Tandimage festival or something, yeah. And when you usually perform your works, because there is a strong combination of visual arts with the multimedia component and the dance uh, component. Yeah. Do you feel that you usually tend to get invited more by dance uh, presenters or more by multimedia or uh, uh, like more visual arts festivals or environments as? The Mutech. Uh, I think it's 50-50 now, like okay. between dance and digital art festivals. Yeah. And this company is now uh, what about 13 years old? The company that you started as 20. Uh, yes, but the member is only me, so it's not really a company. Yeah. So you've been doing this yourself for about uh, since the early 2000s. Yeah. Yes. 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 And uh, since then, the technology has probably evolved quite a bit. Uh -huh. uh, do you feel that your dance uh, has moved differently because of the multimedia component? Or do you feel that the main line through of your dance and your approach to the body has stayed the same? Uh, I, think, I think that um, I'm doing the same uh, direction with my dance. But with the technology that you know that dan uh, dance can be emphasized sometimes, or I can do something not really different, but in the same direction, but sometimes a little bit different. So it's like a, yeah, working together, dance and technology. I think. At first, you were not part of. Uh, you, you did not start your studies in dance. You were studying in photography. Yes. And then eventually, you discovered dance and the possibilities of the the body and movement. Yeah. Um, What exactly made you go more and more towards the body as a tool for art, as, as a matter? Yeah, okay. I think that um, when I was doing a photography that I felt, fr I, I was very frustrated about with, uh, that I cannot express so much about my impulsion. That, uh, and then I was looking for like, uh, like you know, live performance, I mean, the, that that art style that I can make the piece in real time. So then uh, I get interested in dance. Then that with this impression, I'm developing my dance. Yeah. And on your website, in your artist statement, you, you mentioned this notion of impulse. Uh, and it seems to be very prevalent in your work. It seems to be very central to it. Um, how do you bring together this, this desire for the impulse, for the ephemeral and performance for the immediate or the, the how do you bring this this listening to the body uh -huh. as part of a construction of a piece uh -huh. and bind that together with everything else that comes with with a piece so the lighting the the multimedia which is very it's programmed right so it, mm -hmm. it is set in stone to some yeah. extent 
how would you manage to bring this impulsive quality to your work, even with everything that surrounds it? Uh -huh. uh, actually, that, um, with my impulse, that I, with my impulse, I'm making the art, you know, not only dance. So my purpose to make the dance piece, actually to make the space with my impulse. So I always say that if I don't, uh, if I don't need my dance to make this space with my impulse, impulse, uh, I wouldn't dance. So dance is not the center in the piece. So then, anyway, that my uh, yes, my my purpose is to make a space. So then, so anyway, for me that designing light, designing sound, designing videos, video design, uh, it's the same. Like it's a part of the choreography, I would say, but just change the media, like not human body, but sometimes sound, you know. So and then make the space, yeah. And in your in your research also in in your artistic statement again in in what you try to bring to, to the public, there is very much a, I sense a notion of uh, the communicability of of this kinetic essence. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever feel like bringing people on stage so that you can give that to them more? more directly, do you feel that you're a bit restrained by, by the typical performance setting? Mm. Uh, actually, I made a video installation piece that audience can go inside of the space. Uh, yeah, I tried, so I'm researching two different ways, not only dance piece, and also the installation of other visual art, so yeah, yeah. So. And when you when you perform a piece uh, on you know on stage like in a more traditional setting like we'll have here at Mutech, um, how much of the the piece is pre choreographed and how much of it is very much again about finding those impulses in the moment? Uh, I, I really depend on the piece, but for example, uh, at some pieces in some pieces I improvise like eighty percent. But some pieces, like, I already set, like, 80%. So it's really different, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the case of those pieces uh, that you're presenting at Mutech, how much of it is already choreographed and how much of it will you be improvising? Uh, I think one piece, uh, like, split, the name is Splitfall, is... It's more like, for me, it's really more dance piece. So like 80% is uh, improvising. Then other piece called Holistic Strata, it's really more visual piece. Um, in this piece, I would say 60% already set. So 40% improvise, yeah. And when it comes to the Montreal audiences, how do you feel, uh, have you seen uh, works from Montreal performers, choreographers, artists before? Do you know a bit uh, what the scene in Montreal is like for, for dance, uh, for multimedia and digital performance? Uh, actually, unfortunately, I haven't seen so much Montreal stuff because I came here like just three days. And you won't have time to see anything just that no, out? Not really, yeah. Um, one, one thing you mentioned uh, about about this uh, this kinetic energy uh, again in, in your artistic statement, which I found very interesting, yeah. is this notion of uh, man being very much like everything else around him, very much being part of of a yarn of um, of a textile, uh -huh. uh, at, you know, being atoms and. At the subatomic sub level, we're pretty much of it the same as everything else. Yeah, yeah. When you when you perform and when you create, how much of this notion or this philosophy do you bring into the creation process? Like, how much of you is thinking, to some extent, I'm vibrating with the rest of the universe? Um, uh, when I dance, I don't think so much about this kind of thoughts. But when I make the piece. I try not to make the differences between dance and sound, for example. So anyway, as I told you, that I, for me, that making, creating the space is the most important thing. So that anything, uh, anything uh, that I can, the material that I can use for the making the piece is I have to interpret 
you know, at the same level, it's not like, uh, you know, sound should be like this, dance should be like this, not like that. It's like for me, it's same, you know, particle or something. So I try not to see so much differences between the materials. So, so when you create a piece, you create all of the elements one together. You, you link everything together at the same time? Yeah, kind of like... Like an like a orchestra for the music, you know, that you have this instrument, but anyway, they have to make a harmony for just for one song or something. So it's like that, actually. And do you tend to always uh, work on the sound, the lighting, the multimedia component, the dance for all of your pieces? Or do you sometimes bring in uh, collaborators and... Other digital artists. Um, I have sometimes programmers or video technical stuff or this kind of things. But uh, the mo in I think that for the designing I do all the time. Yeah. And when it comes to the digital aspect of it, what could you tell us about uh, how how you, the use of technology is important for you, and how you try not to take to make it take over. The body do, do, is this something that actually you think about? Like the, the multimedia must not take away from the the use of the body. Um, actually, that for me that dance is a tool for my art, you know. And then digital uh, a digital tool is also a tool for my art. So actually, I don't see so much uh, you know that dance should be there. It's same things, yeah. It's same things. So it's a, both of them are tools for me, yeah. And if we went through a timeline of uh, a creation with you, because a lot of the people who listen to Dirty Feet are dancers, choreographers, so this is one of the things that, that they're interested in. How, how do you start the process? Like when you create a piece, do you have um, a pattern that you follow usually? Or is every piece going to be just like a genesis of, of an idea and then it grows bigger? Like, do you follow a path usually? Um... Uh, usually when I make the piece, I have, I set a concept, and then I have a, like, kind of storyboard for the piece, which is really important for me, that, um, this is like a very abstract line, abstract drawing, so this is like a, the score of my piece, then, uh, then I put, you know, I, I try to decide, dance like this, sound like this, da -da 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 -da. so then I try to make them one whole, space so um, I don't start like a dance first or you know, anything like first I first things is a image of the space yeah due to the fact that a lot of your works uh, are either going to be presented as part of an installation yeah, yeah. or in a live performance setting more typical uh, on stage with the audience looking forward to the to the performance mm -hmm. um, do you feel a need to to make it as flexible when it comes to the physical space that it can be set in so that you can switch it between the two. Uh -huh. So do you, do you d decide that this piece could work as an installation, but I need to make it so that if I wanted to present it in a performance space, mm. I could do that too? Yeah, yeah, it's like that. But when I make the, um, for example, holistic strata, I made also the installation but also the performance but uh, yeah with the same concept mm -hmm. yeah and uh, yeah yeah sorry sorry so you created both in parallel so you see them as two distinct uh, things that are basically bound by the same concept yeah, yeah. and um, I want to I want audience to you know uh, uh, enjoy you know in different approach that installation way and dance way so yeah yeah that's a purpose and do you yourself have a have preference uh, for what you like to do? Do you prefer in, doing st installation works with your body in the space? Do you prefer to present on the live stage? Does it depend on the project or on the city? Uh, depend on the project, but uh, the, the most important thing is how, what I can transmit to the audience. So if it's better to, if it's better to, use, uh, to do the installation for to transmit the sensation to the audience, I would take that way. So most important things is that not from my side, but more about audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you came to dance at a later age in life. Uh, you started dancing. You were about twenty. Yeah. 
based on this training using different types of dance methods, yeah. you came to a, a concept all of your own. Could you tell us a bit about the kinetic force method? Yeah. Um, uh, what, I, what I got interested in in the dance, that anyway, the movement, that so um, I'm interested in more about how you can make the movement, not dance actually. So, so that this method is for the, how you can control the body with also with uh, natural forces. So not about the dance style, not about dance technique. It's more about technique for the how you use your body. So then, so that my dance is really abstract, and I don't have any like type of the dance styles. So I get really interested in. I got really interested in um, the system of the movement with your human with your human body. So this is actually idea of the, this method. And for for our audience who might not necessarily see your piece, could you describe a bit how that that describes itself in your body? Do you feel that you have a a, a certain way to move, a certain way to dance that you've developed through your work? Uh, if you could give a sort of an image or a presentation of of uh, how this is expressed through your body, uh, I think that people can see my dance like. Um, uh, okay, I would say like it's kind of like an object or kind of like an animal or kind of insect or anything, but uh, I think that the people don't need to see me like a human dancing on the stage, but it's like a, some object, you know. Then the, my, movement, my movement is like a very fluid, I think, and um, I, wanna try to, I want to try to control the time of the, you know, the move, with the movement. So we've talked so far about a lot of different concepts, different uh, approaches in your art, yeah. but do you feel that your art is, is communicative, is trying to say something specific, or what is the meaning for you of, of your creation? Okay, um, uh, uh, in, my piece, in my piece, there is no message or any meaning, any story inside, so that I want audience to experience the space, not to think too much, not to think about meaning, but just experience first with your body, then, yeah, I want to transmit some sensation to the audience with uh, creating a space, yeah. I remember reading also about uh, something that you were saying about the, um, the need to release the ego through the dance. Um, how much of it is, is it still a focal point for you that that you don't want to be an individual on stage dancing. You, you sort of mentioned that you want to become inhuman in a way. Is it really important for you that as performers we move away from this this need for the ego as a, as an artist? Uh, I, yes, I think that um, on the stage uh, as a dancer, I have to be like an object, you know, not like a human, not like me. I, it's like uh, one of the one of the media or something. So, yeah, I think it's really important for the performer, I think. Yeah. And uh, after this, what's coming for you after this? Do you have uh, new creations coming up? Do you have any plans to come back to Montreal shortly after? Uh, I don't have any plan to come back to Canada, Montreal, but I have some project with uh, other artists and also, yeah, maybe choreography piece, yes, in Japan, yeah. And uh, you have a website where we can find more information about your work, uh, videos also about your performances. Could you tell us what that website is, please? Uh, my website is hiroakiyomeda.com, so you can find it easily. Then also, I have also a Facebook page, so you can find that with my name. So, yeah. Perfect. So this will be performed um, at the Théâtre Maisonneuve uh, on, uh, on May 29th, on Friday, May 29th, from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Uh, Hiroaki Umeda, thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. The Dirty Feet Podcast is produced and hosted by Produit et animé par Alison Burns J.D. Papillon et Stéphanie Morin-Robert 
We have Mainline Theatre, Montreal Improv Theatre and Paula Flalo to thank. Merci pour le soutien. Vous pouvez visiter notre site web, écouter les derniers épisodes, lire notre blog, nous aimer sur Facebook et nous suivre sur Twitter. You can visit our website, listen to past episodes, read our blog, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Show us some love and help us spread the word. Montrez-nous un peu d'amour et aidez-nous à passer le mot. Thank you.